Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Arthritis at Home. I am Cheryl Cohen, a person living with RA, and I work with arthritis consumer experts, and we host this program. I'm so excited uh, because I know I'm going to learn a lot, and I know you're going to learn a lot with our, our guest uh, today, Dr. Mazir Badi. Welcome to the studio. Thank you, Cheryl. It's a pleasure to be here. Let me tell the audience a little bit about you first, and then we're going to dive into our uh, important conversation. So Dr. Betty is a rheumatologist with over 20 years clinical experience. You're dating yourself with this bio, by the way. <laughs> um, Dr. Betty completed his medical training and obtained a master's degree in epidemiology from the University of British Columbia um, and has clinical and research interests in the diagnosis and treatment of degenerative commonly known as osteoarthritis, but it's not always degenerative or is always degenerative, he'll get to that, and inflammatory conditions affecting the spine, the shoulders, hips, and knees. He's received several competitive research grants and has published several articles in peer-reviewed scientific journals. Dr. Biddy is the past president of the Northwest Rheumatism Society. He's been the director of MSK Health, at the Occupational Health and Safety Agency for Healthcare uh, in BC, uh, which is a provincial agency dedicated to the healthcare sector. He is the recipient of the 2022 Polaris Award for Innovation in Rheumatology. Holy smokes, we've got a superstar in the studio, it's, it's clear. Again, welcome Dr. Biddy. And we're here with you today to talk about something that is not talked about a lot because it's not known, at least not out in my consumer slash patient community. And I suspect probably there are a lot of physicians who don't know about this and its use in musculoskeletal health. Um, so we're going to talk to Dr. Betty uh, today about a procedure slash treatment. That's one of my early questions is, is it a procedure or is it a treatment or is it both called geniculate artery embolization or GAE? So if you hear GAE, that's what it means, geniculate artery embolization. So welcome again, Dr. Betty. Thank you so much for the kind of introduction, Cheryl. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Geniculate artery embolization, it's a treatment procedure. So it's a procedure used uh, for treatment. It's not right. a diagnosis, it's a treatment procedure. Uh, it's a minimally invasive procedure. It's it's performed by interventional radiologists uh, in the radiology department at one of the hospitals, uh, in our case, uh, at uh, UBC or Vancouver General Hospital, uh, is where our colleagues do it. The procedure is intended to treat chronic knee pain, particularly pain caused by osteoarthritis or degenerative joint disease. So the procedure targets the geniculate arteries, and these are small arteries that supply blood to the knee joints. Uh, we'll, we'll, I'll talk a little bit about uh, sure. how it works that uh, targeting blood vessels can help with osteoarthritis. But because it's targeting geniculate arteries, it's called geniculate artery embolization. Right. So you mentioned knees. So only knees? GAE is only for the knee joint right now. In the future, if it's very promising for the knee, then uh, there may be some ways of targeting, uh, for example, the shoulder, possibly the ankle. But right now, it's only for the knee joint. Okay, so that makes it very clear for the audience. So the next question, I think that's a, a perfect follow on is, who is the ideal person, patient uh, for this procedure? Who, who would you say is your typical that this person, oh, wow, we're going to try GAE uh in their knee yeah uh gae is best suited for people who have chronic knee pain yes and in particular it's being offered for people with osteoarthritis although at, at our center we are now gaining experience in treating people with rheumatoid arthritis or psoriatic arthritis so inflammatory arthritis as well we have treated a few patients with inflammatory arthritis. But worldwide, uh, the way the procedure has been developed and is being offered is for people with osteoarthritis and degenerative joint disease who haven't responded adequately to other conservative treatments, such as medications, physical therapy, injections of steroids or visco supplementation, bracing, 
and also people uh, who are either not a candidate for surgery or they want to avoid knee replacement for the time being or they're too young or too old for surgery uh, this, this is an alternative option so it's a procedure conservative treatments haven't worked as well and then surgery is still not an option or is not an option yeah, I mean, that's what I found so exciting when I did a little bit of, of reading about GAE is that it's another option, especially for osteoarthritis, where there aren't a lot of options, frankly. That's very true. Uh, it's very exciting that uh, something new, it's not often that for uh, something as common as osteoarthritis that a brand new treatment suddenly emerges. And yeah. GAE has been around uh, in, for less than 10 years. In fact, uh, the first publications of uh, GAE in osteoarthritis are only for the, from the last uh, six or seven years uh, where this has taken off, but the experience has been positive. Okay. Okay, good. Uh, next question, set of questions, and tell the audience a little bit more about how it works and how it's administered. Like, describe the procedure to us, if you could. Yeah, so the geniculate arteries they play a significant role in supplying blood to the knee joint and its surrounding tissues right and in conditions like osteoarthritis inflammation and damage to the knee joint it can stimulate more growth of blood vessels and nerves pain nerves so when you look at a joint that has osteoarthritis or rheumatoid arthritis for that matter when there's inflammation there are new blood vessels grow and new nerves grow and the nerves have blood vessels around them. So the, the blood supply to the osteoarthritic knee is not exactly the same as the blood supply to the completely healthy knee. There are these little blood vessels that are perpetu that, that they're perpetuating inflammation and they're supplying these pain nerves with the uh, blood. So the way the GAE works is by blocking the blood supply to these, let's call them bad blood vessels, or the good blood, <laughs> bad blood vessels. So the bad guys that are uh, helping the inflammation and they're helping the pain nerves, it blocks those blood vessels, those okay. smallest. Vessels. Whereas it doesn't, the the emboli, the particles are too small to block the healthy blood vessels. They go through the big blood vessels, but they block the tiny those. Uh, new blood vessels that come with inflammation and the damage so That's in other words you're not you're not uh sort of uh switching off blood flow to the good ones that are supplying blood throughout the body that are traveling through the knee it's simply targeting the the things that the blood vessels that develop as a result of the damage that's within the joint that's exactly right the Medical term for it is neovascularization. So the oh. new blood vessels that happen within disease, right? For example, osteoarthritis, inflammation. So these tiny blood vessels, they're kind of like a, a, a web of uh, these very little capillary or arteries, very small blood vessels. And these tiny particles will get stuck in these and it will stop the blood flow to those. And then by interrupting the blood supply to these pain nerves, the pain nerves don't send signals to the brain. So the pain nerves don't function. There's less sensation of pain. Also in theory, you're stopping the inflammation itself because you need blood flow to sustain inflammation. If you don't have blood supply, you can't have these inflammatory cells come to the knee joint. So you're doing two things. One is you're disrupting the nerves. You don't sense the pain. You're also disrupting the inflammatory process. Wow, where... su super exciting. So I, I understand from you actually, uh, when we were prepping for this interview, that the use of this procedure GAE in, for example, rheumatoid arthritis is, is newer. Uh, and, and you mentioned that you've even seen it be more effective in someone with rheumatoid arthritis as it is in osteoarthritis. Can you talk a little bit about that? Or is that just kind of an N of one? Is that just observational at this point? Well, it is observational. It's more than one. Uh, we, uh, We've treated five people so far, but uh, with inflammatory arthritis. But in theory, it would work better for inflammatory arthritis because with osteoarthritis, it's mainly still a degenerative process where you have breakdown of the cartilage and there's some inflammation. Uh, 
and GAE mainly stops the inflammation. It stops the blood flow that brings okay. inflammation and supplies the, the nerves. Whereas in rheumatoid arthritis, you have all these pain fibers that, yes, it blocks, but also it reduces the inflammation to the joints. Uh, the neovascularization that I mentioned is a big part of how RA or psoriatic arthritis damage knee joints. So right. by seeing the blood flow to that inflammatory process, it actually makes theoretical sense also why you would be able to help RA and PSA or other inflammatory arthritis as well as OA. In fact, even for osteoarthritis patients, we tend to look for those who have more inflammation. So uh, an osteoarthritis patient who has what we call synovitis, so inflammation of the synovium, the lining to the joint. If, if we do an MRI and we see that there is inflammation in the synovium, those patients will do better with GAE than the ones who have no inflammation at all. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, I, again, didn't know that, and I'm sure of huge interest to, to our audience uh, in particular. What is it, uh, on top of every patient's mind is, how effective is it going to be? How safe is it? How long will this treatment last? Yes. Uh, so as I mentioned, the research is recent. The procedure has only been available for a few years. So even the longest studies are only three to five years long, right? And that's those are the very first. Okay. Most of the studies are to date uh, one to two years long. and. Ideally, what we need are randomized controlled trials. And in fact, we are involved in one randomized trial right now at our center. We're starting, we're about to start one. But in terms of published studies, there are, there are a number of uh, case reports and there are a number of uh, case series where uh, anywhere between, say, 10 patients to 50 or 60 patients are followed, but not in a randomized trial. They're followed with GAE. Those results are very promising. So they report anything up to 70% on average of patients report significant improvement in pain and mobility. And the duration seems to be at least up to 12 months uh, in, in, in studies that have gone beyond two years. There also seems to be sustained benefit up to two years, but most of the studies are 12 month studies and the benefit does last 12 months. Right. It's, that uh, the procedure can be safely repeated. So if someone has had it and then a year or two years later, pain has come back, uh, then GAE can be repeated two years later or one year later. These are what we're learning. The studies are ongoing. Uh, in terms of safety, it uh, appears to be safe and uh, low risk of complications. But like any other medical procedure, there are always uh, risk of uh, complications. So there are minor complications, things like uh, where they do the catheter at the groin, uh, that there could be bleeding or infection at the puncture site of the needle. Uh, there might be some bruising. Uh, there might be some increased pain for a few days uh, because they're embolizing the arteries. And that's often people do better with ice or anti-inflammatories for a few days after the procedure. In terms of serious complications like injury to the artery or uh, in damage to the skin over the knee because the blood supply by mistake is blocked off uh, or uh, damage to the distal uh, leg, uh, distal to the knee. These uh, have been reported are, but are very rare. Uh, we try to select patients uh, who would have less chance of complications. So if someone has very bad vascular disease, diabetes, atherosclerosis, we would not offer GAE to these patients if they're already having uh, thrombotic events, uh, history of uh, having problems with blood clots, uh, then GAE may not be the best for them. So th we select patients also to make to try to minimize the risk of side effects in people that we offer GAE to. So basically the same kind of inclusion or exclusion criteria that are used for other studies, medication or a physical therapy intervention, those would apply here as well. Um, and, and every patient along with their skilled uh, physician needs to make that you know risk benefit uh, kind of analysis and then see for themselves if it's in fact an, an option. It's great to have the option in, in my own view as a patient, which is really cool. Couple other quick questions, and I know you've got a busy uh, day ahead of you. Um, 
let me ask you, how long does the procedure take? And like, is there a lot of preparatory time? Do, do I have to do something weeks in advance to get ready for it? How long does it take once I'm in the in the room with the interventional radiologist, uh, et cetera? Yeah, excellent question. Uh, so right now, the way we do it uh, at you, it's a day procedure. So okay. uh, people go home after the procedure, but the way we're doing it uh, at UBC and BGH is the intervention radiologists do the procedure, but they have they prefer that uh, one person does all the assessments even before uh, anybody's considered that that one person uh, is, is me right now. So patients are referred to my office. We do the first assessment to make sure the patient is even suitable for GAE. And uh, still most people, in fact, uh, we offer them procedures other than GAE, or uh, most people are not the best candidate for GAE. And we, we have a nice talk and we decide, well, maybe right. there are other but people who are candidates for GAE, they are referred to interventional radiology. They also get a radiology assessment. So the radiologist will first meet with them for half an hour, explain the procedure, do a risk assessment, explain all the side effects, how the procedure goes, so they can people can still think about it, they go home. But when they come back, it's uh, the procedure, It overall, they will be in the radiology department uh, for about half a day, but the procedure itself is short. It takes like half an hour to do the procedure. Right. When they come in, they sign in, the nurses assess them. Uh, at first, uh, the uh, radiologist uh, does preparation. So local anesthesia, it's not general anesthetic, it's a local anesthesia or conscious sedation. Uh, and then they make a small incision over the groin area where the catheter is placed in the groin, just like angio for heart angio. Right. Instead of going to the heart, it goes to the knee. Uh, and then uh, they... Uh, confirm positioning by uh, using contrast when they know they're in the right place in the geniculate arteries, then uh, there is something called the blush where they take a picture and they see that network of blood vessels that I mentioned. It's very obvious in the unhealthy osteoarthritic knee, there is that network like a mesh, whereas in a healthy knee, it's not there. So right. they have it they have that blush that they want to block. So they embolize, they put uh, tiny uh, coils or tiny particles inside the blood vessel to go and block these tiny arteries. They confirm placement uh, with dye and then they, there's recovery. They remove the catheter. Patients are good to go home after they observe them for an hour to make sure everything is okay. They go home and then it takes about two, three days. Uh, they can do anything, but it takes about two, three days to recover uh there might be some small bruising some pain for two or three days no no size. going in swimming pools or bathe bathing things that are pretty basic when you have an incision precisely yeah. exactly yeah um that is just incredible uh my last i just am so fascinated by the science it's so elegant uh it's so great to have another option um, I, I myself have had a joint replacement um, because this wasn't around when I had my joint replaced. Maybe I might have tried it. Um, last question is how, how right now it's available through your research study, it sounds like. Is it available to the, to the general public who may be a candidate, who pays for it? Uh, how does that work? Yeah, uh, so actually, uh, even though we're doing a research study, it, it's no, it's available through the public system. And in it fact, is. yes, and in fact, uh, I understand they're starting to offer the procedure uh, in Surrey, and I believe maybe at Royal Columbia, they've even done one or two. Uh, so it's covered by MSP, it's fully covered. And the uh, part that we're doing a study on uh, isn't the procedure itself. So it's not uh, a, uh, it's not an experimental procedure. Okay. Either offered uh, as part of the treatment uh, but uh, people can be referred by their GP or orthopedic surgeon or rheumatologist uh, either they're referred to radiology but then they will just forward the referral to my office or they can be directly referred to my office and the family doctor or rheumatologist would write please assess for GAE right knee, so knee your, your doctor GAE uh, which is yes. uh, <laughs> Is a really an cool designation, yeah. Um, yeah. Your earlier point, Cheryl, uh, a lot of our referrals right now are coming from orthopedic surgeons. Right. They 
patients and they say, maybe it's too early to have knee surgery. So try the GAE first. It might buy, it, say, two, three years. Uh, and GAE, in fact, seems to work better if people don't have that end stage OA, if they still have some cartilage left. So grade two, grade three osteoarthritis under x-rays. So the GAE will help reduce the pain, preserve the cartilage, and then two, three, four years later, they can have the knee surgery. So a lot of referrals come to us from the knee surgeons, in fact. Yeah, I think that's just such a great intermediary step when you're looking at the, the journey to joint replacement. Um, I, I can't think of a person I've met in our thousands and thousands across the country who are our members and subscribers who would have said, oh, yeah, well, I'll just jump straight to joint replacement. Do you know what I mean? Uh, yes. No one wants to have a surgery and knee replacement is a significant surgery there. It's an incredible surgery. Uh, but if you can uh, push it back a bit uh, in the journey, great. Um, I am uh, going to I was going to ask you one other question and you may or may not know the answer. And that's uh, fine, we can get the information for folks at the end. Um, is this being offered in other provinces? You're in British Columbia, and it's covered through MSP, the medical services plan in British Columbia. Do you know what's happening in other areas of the country? I know that uh, in Quebec, they're doing this in Montreal, uh, because I know of I, interventional radiologists who are doing this. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they're starting to do this in other uh, provinces. Uh, they do GAE, I think, in every province for what we call hemarthrosis, bleeding in the knee from after knee replacement surgery. So GAE was always was done for I long see. certification. So for that, they're doing it everywhere. But for the osteoarthritis, it, the, inter, the, the IRs have to be interested and skilled in doing it. And the orthopedic surgeons or rheumatologists have to be knowledgeable. So I don't know about the other provinces just yet. But I'm sure if it's not there, it's coming. Okay. Well, that's terrific. Um, you have given us the great uh, 101, a primer on uh, geniculate artery embolization or GAE. We're really, really uh, pleased and privileged to have you in the studio. And we can't thank you enough for your time, Dr. It was Bishop. such a pleasure. Yep. Yeah. We will see you again soon. All Thanks the best. for tuning Bye -bye. in, everyone. Take care. Bye.